Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I'm here today with my creative year, hashtag my creative year, and the prompt word is status. Uh, my status is a little odd today because my status is about something that's coming in, I don't know, six or seven weeks. Starts with a C. <laughs> I know some of you don't want me to say that word, but you know what I'm referring to. Okay, so um, I joined a, uh, a Facebook group that is new, and they are trying to use scraps up. I will, uh, I'm going to talk about what, what precipitated all of this, and I'm going to show you what inspired this project. In the summer months, I think about the fall. When fall comes, then I think about winter and so on and so forth. But mostly in the summer, I think about winter because it is so flipping hot here in Texas. I live for air conditioning. I live in the air conditioning and I run from the car to the air condition. I run from the house to the air conditioned car to the air conditioned store and then repeat backwards. Um, I'm not good in the heat. So I really like fall and winter much better. So during the summer months, this is what I'm sketching. Let me put you in. Where's the button? So this is the kind of stuff that I'm sketching in my sketchbooks. This one is uh, 2013, but I keep referring back to these. And these images were inspired by something that I'm sure I saw on Pinterest because where else do I go? <laughs> so I draw things like this. I doodle that stuff. And then I doodle more and more and candy. Oops, you can't see that, sorry. And candy. Um, and then this one. This one, oh, there's a dog. There is can, uh, candy. There are ribbons on here and horns for New Year's Eve. So I enjoy doing this stuff, even though it's not that time of the season when I do them, but it helps me to get in the spirit of things. This one actually was done on New Year's Eve 2013. I stopped buying Christmas cards a while ago and started trying to make my own stuff. And I kind of like it that way. It's a creative outlet for me once a year. And now my family is kind of, I think they've kind of come to expect it. All right, so then the next thing I found is I have a Brayer book. This is my Brayer book where I clean my Brayer off. And I've started doodling in my Brayer book because... It already has backgrounds in it, already painted. Some of them are stenciled. Some of it's just, you know, random stuff here, there, and yonder. But my favorite thing in this book is this right here. And I think I've shown this to you guys before. But I love this. Such a simple doodle. And this is going to be on my Christmas stuff this year. So I'm going to show you how I did it. Now, I have a lot of leftover business cards from when I was a personal chef and from when I had an Etsy store with a different name to it. And I saved all those business cards, and I have hundreds of them, and I'm not kidding when I say hundreds. So what I decided to do is to take an old business card. There's my phone number. Take an old business card. I put very light, pale blue watercolor on it, sketched out my tree and the trunk. Wait, let me bring you in. Whoop sketch that out, and then I'm going to show you how I doodle it and how quick these can be made. Now, I'm making 50 of these, so quick, you know, is like I said, as so many other videos is a relative term, but it's only taken maybe a week or two to do this because I do it while I'm watching TV. All right, so I want to keep to the design of the tree, so I lightly put it in a pencil and then did the trunk in pencil. Now I'm going to take a, this is a, nub, a number one micron pen. And what you do is kind of make a tilted teardrop. You can go along the lines if you're comfortable with doing working on the outside in. It doesn't matter to me, and it doesn't matter which direction they go in, as long as the general form is a Christmas tree, and hence that's why I do it in pencil first, so that I make sure I kind of follow the design of the tree. You're going to hear the dogs barking in the background. I had to let them out. Sorry. 
They don't have to all go the same direction. As a matter of fact, it's much more interesting if they don't. You can make different sizes. You can leave gaps in them. I'll show you how we fill those in later. It doesn't take long. It's kind of, you know, just a basic teardrop. And then you put a little mark in it. I think some of my others, I have two marks in it, but we're going to hang with one on this one. So I just follow along the line and fill in the gaps, so on and so forth. Do I have any others that are in process? Oh yes, I do, here. So this is what it looks like when it's finished. We go from this to that. The next step is you're going to need some kind of a coloring utensil. I'm using Dina Wakely Scribble Sticks. I've recently discovered them and so in love with them because they're so easy to use. And you're going to need a paintbrush or a water brush. I'm using a Pentel water brush. I was at an art re retreat recently and we got to use three different size of the round ones that are more rounded. I hear they make a larger set where you get some flat heads in them and I think I'm going to get me one. Anyway, so that's what I'm using. Uh, the size of the brush doesn't really matter, un you know, unless you're very particular about that, which I am not. So I'm going to use the Pentel water brush. So in order for this to move on to the next stage, I take, uh, let's see what this is, lime water, uh, lime, lime scribble stick. And I'm just kind of going to color over some of the leaves. I'm not going to do them all because it spreads. And the lighter it is, the better it is. I don't want it to be dark. So that's why I picked the lime because I'm going to use a darker green to kind of accentuate it. So I'm just kind of randomly going through and coloring. And that's it. I'm not doing anything special to it. Now I'm going to take the water brush. Uh, where's my paper towel? Here we go. I'm going to take a paper towel and squeeze some water on it to make sure that my water brush is ready to go and it's damp. There we go. I don't want it sopping wet because, you know, these cards are not meant really for watercolors. So I just take the brush and lightly spread out the pale green, well, it's lime green, throughout the whole thing. And yes, fill in the blank spots too, because it really doesn't matter. You're not going to see them in the end. So it doesn't matter. I feel like I'm mopping a floor. <laughs> all right. So there we are, all done. See how quick that was? You don't have to be an art student to get this right. Then I'm going to take the dark green, which is called ooh, evergreen. Then I'm going to go around the outside of some of these and create a faux shadow. And then we're going to take the water brush and kind of spread it out again. Now this is not meant to be an accurate shadow type thing. It's only to give a little more depth to the tree by using the dark. I know nothing about light and shadows. Absolutely nothing. Ask Gina Aaron, she will tell you. <laughs> she tried to help me do a watercolor and it freaked me out. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to take the water brush and kind of brush down the sides a little bit to smooth out the, the scribble stick lines. It does not have to be perfect. No tree is ever perfect. Nothing's ever straight. As I was told at the art retreat that I went to, no tree ever stands up completely straight. I'm just going to smooth it around. And if you go outside the lines, whatever. Seriously, it's really not an issue unless you are a perfectionist. Let me get some more water on there. Unless you're a total perfectionist, it really is not necessary to get a little to get crazy over it going out of the lines. Plus, the water is going to soak through around the edges. It's okay. Accentuate it. Let me put a little more dark on here. I missed a few spots where I think I need a little help. A couple there, one there, one here, and a little darker one there. And because the business card is a little wet, 
already. You won't have a hard time smoothing out the lines because, you know, when you use a scribble stick, it's not like using watercolor from a pan set. It does leave lines if you're not careful. So I like colored pencils. Unless you really work them hard with the water, you can see the lines from the colored pencils many times. All right. So I think that's enough fussing around with that. Then I'm using the, let's see this, oh my goodness, umber. So this is for the bottom. I'm just going to lightly kind of scribble over that. Again, just take a little water, smooth it out so at least you know it's the trunk. And that's it. Let me dry this and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so I've dried the card. And that's how it looks done. So the next part is going to require that you get some kind of a colorful thing that will make dots. And let me go in. see this the white space in between the leaves you solve that problem by putting a little smudge of a lovely color uh, these are Christmas balls so I've picked a whole bunch of different colors and just randomly do a little round color on it it, there is no rhyme or reason to this. I just picked colors that I knew I still had juice left in my Posca pens. <laughs> you know how well I plan, right? <laughs> this one is dying. Uh-oh, blob. Thank goodness that wasn't a disastrous blob. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my paper towel and soak it up just a tad because I don't want a, a runny tree. Although I suppose you could. This one's not going to work well. Okay, so we'll get a different version of that. Dark blue, which will cover up the light blue. And there we have it. Ta-da! And I just randomly put these little dots all over the tree. Like I said, there is no rhyme or reason to it. You can load it up. You can do it sparsely. You can put snow on it and put string lights, make it look like it has string lights on it. I don't want to take the time to do that kind of thing this year because I just flat have run out of time. I usually am more prepared for the season, but this year I was re really very busy in the fall and it is getting worse. So I may have to start making my Christmas stuff in the summer. Now beware, if you decide you want Christmas colors, you better get them in the winter and then save them till when you decide you're going to do them because otherwise in the summer you're going to have a hard time finding a lot of red and green stuff. Let me dry this off and then I will finish off the highlights on it. The next part is going to require that you get some kind of a pen that, a pen that will write over paint. I don't know what your preference is, but I use the Signos, and I'm just going to put a little white dash in the corner, a little half circle in the corner of every one of these little Christmas balls to make it look like there's light shining. And again, I don't know where the light source is. Those of you who are more particular, I'm sure your balls will be much lovelier than the way mine are. I don't know, but I think this will do it. One more. And don't try to do this while the card's wet because I've ruined a couple of Poscas and I've ruined um, a Signo pen doing this when it's still wet. It's not great. All right, the final touch. Let's see what number is this. A one, that's too thick. Number is this one? A three. Again, too thick. Let me see. Let me look at my microns here, the numbers. There we go. This is a .005. This is one of the finest ones they have. And it looks very plain around the edges. So what I'm going to do is, let me put it really close so you can see what I'm doing. Now if I'm out of frame, please excuse me because this is a new setup so I'm not really sure what I'm doing here. What I'm going to do is do three dots and a dash. So I'll do dot, whoops, dot, come on, dot, dot, dash, dot, 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 that's too small. All right. Uh, let's see, what other one can I use? I think I need a two. There we go. Let's try a two. I think the two might be better. So let's go over it again. We do dot, 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 dash, dot, 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 dash. There we go. So all you're doing is creating a border 
to give it a little more interest and to wrap it up so it stays contained inside the space. Oh, there we go. See, I'm out of frame. All right, let's try that better. Maybe this will work. See, it's just three little dots and then a line. Three little dots and a line. And I go all the way around the card that way through the whole card. And as you can see, I'm going to finish this one later. I have done a whole bunch of these, which tells you I watch way too much TV. <laughs> All right, so how are we going to finish this off? Somebody gave me this idea. It was not my original idea. I got it from a group that uh, was just started that is encouraging people to use their scraps. So here's my business card from when I was a personal chef. This is a business card from an Etsy shop. Doesn't really matter because you're not going to see either anything. So what I did was, in the beginning, to use the cards, I covered it up with scrap painting paper. And then they said, why don't you put ribbon on it and use it for a tree hanger? I was like, oh, magnificent idea. So here's one that still has this on the back. And here's another one, but I'm going to glue these two together. So on the back, you can write a note to the person, put the year that you gave it to them. Now, I noticed something a few minutes ago when I was matching these up. The bottom card is larger than the top card, and it gives me a nice little white frame. You can paint over this. Just paint the edges. Don't paint the whole card. You can paint the edges and then put it on there. So, like, if you want red or purple or whatever on the outside, that would be a great way to use that. So let me uh, see. I cut some grow grain ribbon that I had on hand. I'm not spending money when I do these cards because I do like 50 of them. And honestly, the postage is already expensive enough. This is five and actually it's five inches. Very good. I'm not tying a knot in it because it would be too bulky. So I'm just going to take this, cross it over, and find some glue. <laughs> cross it over, and I just got this on my trip, the art retreat for Intervals of Sanity. And I just loved it so much that I have started using it in all kinds of things, books and whatever. Um, and I think that this is going to be the best way to glue it. I thought about using some Tacket, that really smelly glue. This doesn't smell, at least not the way I thought it was going to. Take this, put the ribbon over it, so the nice part is in the front. Whoops! Put it down on the glue. And I'm going to take this and put it on the printed side of my business, my old business card. And I think these are going to take a couple days to dry. I don't think this is going to be something that's going to be lovely right away. Not, well, you probably could hang it right away, but honestly, it's not Christmas yet. And there, I have to press down a little bit. Sorry, press down on a little bit. And scoot, it still scoots around on the other card, and it's a little bulky at the top. You may want to use something thinner like a, a twine that will, whoops, see it's still slidey. And there you have a lovely ornament that you can hang on a tree. And what I'm going to do is, this is going to be in my family Christmas letter, and this will be my token token thing for every family and every friend that I send one to. I'll sign it on the back and I'll say Merry Christmas to them, Happy New Year, the um, who it's from, and the year 2018 on it. And that will be something they can use as a bookmark, they can use it as an ornament, they can throw it away, it doesn't really matter. But I wanted to give them something that I made from me. Okay, so the status for this year, or for this, um, for this video is the C word and trying to get ahead of the curve. Um, 
This is November, and I start mailing out my cards uh, like right after Thanksgiving. So I am going to be on time this year if it kills me. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, this is for hashtag my creative year with the prompt word status. And for me, the status is Christmas cards. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, share, comment, anything you need to do. Thanks for watching. Bye.